Around the same time, but independent of Fourier's observations, a naturalist and outdoorsman from the Swiss Alps made some observations that rocked the scientific community. Pardon my pun. Jean-Pierre Paradine was not a trained scientist, and yet he knew enough to notice that some giant boulders perched along ridges in the Swiss Alps did not belong there. Rather, he had seen many similar looking rocks scattered along the valleys in the region. Now we refer to these boulders as erratics. Furthermore, Paradine noticed that these rocks and those in the valley had long lines carved into them. As any scientist would do, Paradine tested some hypotheses before settling on the most probable answer. He knew that floods could not move rocks that high because of course we know rocks do not float. Since he had also seen these scratch marks on rocks near the ends of glaciers, he, he hypothesized that these massive bodies of frozen water, which we call glaciers, that moved down the sides of mountains due to gravity would be able to carve lines like these on the rocks and even be able to transport heavy rocks. He also realized that the glacier must have been pretty high up in the valley if it was to transport the rocks so high. So the problem with his hypothesis was that he did not observe a glacier that high up in the mountains. So where did it go? He wondered if perhaps the climate had been colder in the past, such that a glacier had filled the valley. This observation led Paradine to contact a number of other naturalists and scientists. He talked to Ignace Venetz, who is a naturalist and a founder of the field of glaciology, who shared this idea with geologist and colleague who also studied glaciers, Jean de Char Charpentier. They in turn share the idea with Louis Agassi. And I apologize if I'm mispronouncing these names. Um, he proposed that there had been an ice age in the past during which glaciers extended from the North Pole into down into North America and into Europe. Now at the time, you have to imagine that ice age was a very new term. It had not yet been highlighted in a series of kid-friendly movies or discussed in scientific journals to any extent. So Agassi collected Evison, excuse me, evidence and presented it with drawings like the one that's shown here in which he detailed how glaciers could transport these glacial erratics, also known as out-of-place boulders. In 1837, Agassi presented his Ice Age theory to the Swiss Society of Natural Science. But even Agassi, who was a widely respected scientist at the time, had a hard time convincing his colleagues about his observations because they were simply so radical. And so he received a chilly reception to his Ice Age theory. So sorry, another bad pun. Together, these scientists, including one non-scientist, were the founders of the field of paleoclimatology, which is the study of past climates.